and welcome to Spotlight with Kimmy. In our generation, taking a photo is so simple. We literally take out our phones, take a picture anywhere, anytime. We can use filters. We can post them on social media or any other platforms. Millions of people are taking pictures. But when something stands out, you know it's special. Today, I'm speaking to a published photographer. He's also a YouTuber, an author, a blogger from Toronto. What I always say is that his photography is a mood of its own. You got to check out his photos to know what I'm saying. So let's welcome Mr. Brian James. <laughs> hey, Kimmy, thank you so much for having me on the show. I'm super excited to be here as your, I think, third guest, right? Yeah, that's right. Hi, Brian. Awesome. Hello, hello. I actually almost want to say hello, Mr. Brian James, because of your Instagram name. <laughs> Yeah, I suppose that's how most people uh, know me. And it's weird, uh, like saying that all the time when people like ask me like, Oh, can I follow you on Instagram? What's your name? And I'm like, Mr. Dot, put the dot, Brian James. That's a little bit weird. But because yeah, sometimes I wonder how people think of their Instagram names. Because usually people don't just put their name. But so why did you put Mr. Brian James? Well, I, when I first uh, decided to get on Instagram, I, I hadn't been on social media. And I think I came up with something crazy like, you know, Brian underscore 37, 62, whatever. It was like stupid, right? And then um, when I decided to like kind of get into photography and I was looking at creating a website, um, I wanted to use my first and middle name. James is my middle name, actually. I don't use my, my real name, if you will, publicly. So I went with Brian James, but of course that was taken and every cool combination of Brian James, Brian James photography, it was all gone. So I thought, since I'm so unique, I'll put Mr. in front of it. And thank God it was available. <laughs> and so from there, I even, my website is mrbrianjames.com. I think it sounds that. cool. I like it like that. Thank you. thank you. Wait, you said Brian James is not your full name. What is your full name? My full name is Brian James. <laughs> 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 okay, so... I think we, we know each other for a good while now, but something I actually don't know about you at all is you being an author. Hmm. Well, yeah, so I'm, I'm dabbling. Uh, I, I like to write, and it's, it's been pretty private. I haven't really shared it yet, but um, uh, I do write poetry and some short stories. And so um, in the near future, I'm going to be releasing a book, self-publishing a book, uh, fingers crossed that does well, but it's going to be like a combination of um, certainly my photography, but then along with some of the photos, there'll be either a story or a poem in which I use the photo as inspiration for. So, you know, we'll see how it's received. They won't all be sad. If you, if you look on my page, you know, I have a lot of dark and moody photos, but, but I have uh, quite a few inspiring and uplifting poems, I think. So I think it'll be nice. I think people will enjoy it. Yeah, that's, I can see you being good at that, actually, because as I introduced you, I mentioned that your photos have a certain mood, and that you are a certain mood. <laughs> You're a whole mood of your own. <laughs> yeah, like good or bad, that's, 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 you get what you get. This is what I am, so, yeah. But, Ryan, tell me about your journey. How did you actually gain interest in photography? I think photography was always something that I was interested in and I was always a fan of photography, although I couldn't name you necessarily, you know, someone that inspired me per se. But, um, you know, to be honest, I was going through like a rough time in my life and I was going to see a therapist and the therapist asked me, you know, what is it that you do for fun? What is, you know, something that, you know, that you have for yourself, like a hobby? And I was like, well, I don't really have much, but I've always been interested in photography, but, I haven't pursued that. And she asked me why. And I said, well, I'm not very good at it. And then she convinced me, you know, well, who said you're not good at it? You know, she goes, just do it for yourself. You don't have to show anybody. So I was like, yeah, I guess that wouldn't hurt if I just take some photos and do it for myself. So my, my therapist actually, she's like, so next, next week, you don't have to show me if you don't want, but you have to promise me you're going to take one hour a week to go shoot. Even if you don't show anybody and just do that for yourself. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do that. And so that's where it started really. And then, um, yeah, then I finally decided to join social media. I posted my first photo, which is not glamorous. I don't know if you're going to show that or not, but um, I will. that's how it started. And, uh, and here I am today, like maybe three years later, I think I've been shooting almost three years now. Wow. 
I didn't, I didn't actually know that I didn't see where you started from on social media. So you said it's been like two years, two, three years. It's been, it's been three years. Um, I took about a six month break for personal reasons and I just wanted to get off of, you know, the internet for a little while, but, uh, but I missed it. I, I miss sharing my photos. I, I really, um, what really, one thing that's super encouraging to me is, um, um, you know, getting feedback from people or people write me about how they, how my photos make them feel or how they can relate or how I inspire them. Uh, and people all the time are asking me for like lessons and tips and, you know, and all that makes me feel really good. And, and I like to help people as well. So, you know, so that's, that keeps me going for sure. Actually, that picture behind you looks like you took it, honestly. <laughs> no, mine would have been much better than this. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> okay, okay, so I actually, I actually printed one of my pieces recently. Um, and you can purchase my prints on my website, mrbrianjames.com. That's a plug for me. And I did put a print there, but it didn't, I didn't feel like it went with my apartment, so I took it down. And then okay, I, sold. I think you should put another one up. You should just put your work up. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do, I think. And others, because I like to support other artists too. There are other people that I, that, that I do like, that I follow as well. So I'll probably get their pieces as well. Although some of my favorite photographers don't sell their pieces yet. So, which uh, I would encourage everyone to sell their stuff because you never know. Even I've sold, I've sold pieces that weren't my favorite. And I was like, well, I don't know if anyone would ever really be interested in this, but let me put it up there anyways. And, and sure enough, people buy it. Everyone has to it. For whoever's listening. Yeah. <laughs> But as you mentioned, um, you don't have someone who actually inspired you earlier on, but do you have a few favorite photographers? Yeah, early on, I couldn't, I mean, maybe Ansel Adams, you know, obviously was a very famous photographer. And so um, I just like the rawness of the photos. And, and now, you know, I like so many different styles of photography, um, but beyond doing portraits and things like that street street photography is really my my favorite um although street photography doesn't make you much money in this in this business but um there's two people i would say um professor hines he goes by professor hines on instagram and the other one would probably be dean bean d-e-a-n-b-e-a-n -E -E um she her name's dina she's a photographer in washington and Professor Hines is in uh, New York City. And they just have like this just raw, beautiful street style. So moody. Um, and just, you know, the essence of street photography is really just like capturing people in their natural habitat, if you will. Almost like, almost like you're looking at animals on a safari. I hate to call humans animals, but, you know, we are kind of animals to some degree. <laughs> we won't talk about that. Um, yeah, so so that's what I love about it. I just love the raw, the raw and realness of it, and so that's one of the reasons I love street photography as well. So I would say those two are on my radar right now. Well, speaking of street photography, I can imagine how that must be more tough to do. Have you ever gone kicked out of somewhere, or someone ever has gone mad at you for taking their photo? Yeah, absolutely. Both of those situations. Um, not so much with as far as getting kicked out. Not so much with street photography, but you know. Um, so I consider street photography when you're taking pictures of people. Okay. Now like urban photography, that's what I would call it is when you're taking pictures of architecture and buildings and street cars and things like that. And so, you know, I've, I've been living in Toronto. Uh, well, I've, I've been in Canada for a couple of years, but I've been in Toronto now only two months. And, um, it seems like security is always on top of me. Um, <laughs> whether it's in a parking garage, it's in a mall. I got kicked out the other day in a mall. They just know. <laughs> and I admit I was bad. Like I was just taking my camera like this and the guy's like, can't take pictures in here. And I was like, yeah, but it's a mall. And he's like, yeah, you can't take pictures in here. I'm like, I can't take pictures in a mall. And he says, no. I'm like, okay, I just want to take a real quick picture of the ceiling. He's like, you can't. I said, okay, I understand. He's like, don't take pictures. I said, you got it. I got on the escalator and I put my camera up in the air and I took like 30 photos <laughs> and he was yelling. He's like, get out. You got to get out. I was like, okay, I'm leaving. But I got what, what I wanted. I, want. exactly. I, I got what I wanted. Um, you know, and as far as like a street photography, yeah, some some people will get mad. You know, they're like, "Did you just take a picture of me?" I don't want my picture taken. And you know what? And if somebody asks me to delete it, I will gladly delete it because it's not worth it. 
um, you know, however, like the legal standpoint of it is if you're out in public, whatever is accessible to the human eye is, can be photographed. So, um, and that's the thing you want it to be candid. I don't really, I, although I do ask people to pose sometimes 99% of the time, I don't want you to even know I'm taking the photo. And, uh, just a, like a rule for me is I don't take photographs of people that put them in an uncompromising position or okay. make them look their worst. You know what I mean? I wouldn't take a photo of someone like laying on the street, you know, desperate for money, uh, things like that. So, you know, I try to try to make people look good always. So are some people really happy when you're taking their picture if they notice that you took their picture? Most people don't notice. Okay. And a lot of people don't care. But what I do, if, I'm, if I want to do like street portraits or I think someone looks really cool, um, honestly, my, my thing is like, I stop them. I like half put the camera in the air. Do I have a camera with me? I half, like I put the camera in the air. I'm like, wait, 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 you have to stop. You have to stop. Like literally you look so good right now. I love your outfit. I love your hat. Those glasses are so cool. Let me just snap a photo of you. And I basically start taking the photo before they get their consent. <laughs> Cause I want them to process it. Cause I want that look, not the, you know, not the pose. Like, yeah, you want a natural. <laughs> yeah. And then, so I get it and I'm like, check this out. And then, of course I take like five in a row, but I don't tell them that. And then I find the best one and I show them. And most of the time they're like, wow, it does look really good. And I'm like, Hey, how about I send this? I send this to you. Thank you for your time. Two seconds it took. And so, so yeah, that's what I do. So what is one thing that you wish you knew when you first started taking photos professionally? <laughs> I wish I knew how much all this would cost me. And I wish <laughs> And I wish I knew, no offense to anyone, but I wish I, I knew how undervalued photographers are and how, dare I say, unappreciative sometimes people are. And the reason I say that is, you know, people will call me and they'll ask for my price, for example, and I'll tell them my price. And, you know, sometimes they're like, that's amazing. And half the time they're like, you have to, you have to be kidding me. How, how dare you charge that much for, for what you do? And so... Um, you know, I just, I don't think people realize the thousands of dollars that we spend on equipment and then the hours we spend not only learning how to photograph and practicing our, our craft and then the hours of editing that you don't see yeah. behind the scenes. So you're not paying for one hour of, you know, with me, you're paying for several hours. And so, so that was one thing I, I, I wish I knew, but it, it's okay. It's, it's, it's paid for itself so far and I just really love doing it. And um, especially taking portrait photography. Like I just, I love to make people feel good about themselves and, and be proud of, you know, a photo that we took together. So. Speaking of that, we also had our own photo shoot, our, my first one with you. And mm -hmm. I was super shy and awkward, you know that. So mm -hmm. I was actually quite impressed in how you can make people feel less awkward. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and I think you should share if you have any tips to tell people how to help their model or client or whatever you want to call it, feel less awkward if they're not professional. Um, I think, I think I'm, I've, I was, I was gifted with a pretty decent personality and I like to make people laugh. And so I would say, you know, maybe comedy is not your strong point, but what if you, if you have, I don't want to say a talent, but um, you want to get your, model if you will to like kind of let their guard down and, and feel comfortable and feel at ease and so even if that means for the first 20 minutes you don't take any photographs at all or even let them take photographs of you just to like break the ice and see how awkward you are behind the camera <laughs> um you know just to make them feel more comfortable and we're not talking about professional models here we're talking about people like you or you know people that want to get family portraits done or something like that so I would say just like be real with them. If you have the opportunity to talk on the phone before you meet, just so they can hear your voice and kind of feel more comfortable, it, it goes a long way. And then I, I know that like when I've done repeat sessions, like we just, as soon as we start, like we're good, like, cause we've done this before, you know? So I would say just, um, you know, be personable and, uh, and it's not, and since I just recently did it, it's not easy being on the other side of the camera. I get that. But but you know what also actually really helped me was the fact that while you were taking pictures, you weren't silent. That really bothers me when photographers are silent when mm -hmm. taking pictures of you because it just makes you feel extra awkward. 
I've been guilty of that in the past, for sure. And that's something that you, you, as you gain confidence as a photographer, then that starts coming out of you and you're able to give more direction and um, give positive feedback or positive affirmations because that's super important to know that you're doing well. Um, again, I, I completely understand what that feels like and you don't know like, am I doing well? Are these pictures working out for you? Are you just so disappointed? You know, it's almost like when you're taking a test or writing a test or an exam, right? It doesn't talk back to you, so you don't know how you're doing. But imagine if after every question you wrote, your professor would be like, you got yep. that one right. That's good. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, right? It builds your confidence. <laughs> that is amazing. That would be, imagine like a green check mark just appears at the side of, this, of your sentence or whatever the answer. And you're just like, okay, yeah. I feel good. I'm not failing this whole thing. <laughs> but I mean, I cheated on most of my exams, so I... I, uh, I don't know. Never mind. Can we cut that out of it? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm pretty smart. Okay. I, I may have looked over at my neighbor's paper a couple times. That's okay. I'm sure most people are guilty of that, I think. But <laughs> also what helped me was when you were showing me how to pose. Oh, boy. <laughs> Well, and didn't I tell you to forget, like erase that from your memory? I told you, like how, not like, possible. <laughs> oh boy, yeah. Well, yeah. You know what? That's the best way, I guess. You know, did it help? It helped. All right, then I then I'll keep doing it. Because then I realized I have, that my pose is not that weird. Like if you tell me how to pose, I'm like, for me, it felt a bit weird and artificial at first. Um, but then when I saw you do the pose, I'm like, oh. <laughs> And I'm very feminine, so yeah, I'm sure it looked wonderful. <laughs> you said you recently did, you were a model recently. I saw on your Instagram. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, so I do take self-portraits, and so I set up in my studio. I have my camera tethered to my laptop, or I use a remote control on my phone. And so I take my own photos usually. And they're always usually very serious or... I don't know, or I, or I do a whole bunch of photoshops. I have a photo where my face is cracked. Half of my face is kind of peeling like paint. And, um, you know, that was just a, a creative outlet for me. It took me hours. Don't ever ask me to do that. I'm not doing it for anyone. Um, but, um, but yeah, so I finally got behind the camera. Uh, one of my friends is, um, is learning photography. And so I was like, Hey, you know, I want to try modeling too. And so, uh, since we're friends, maybe you could take my, my photo for me so yeah it wasn't so bad at all it was I was a lot more nervous than I thought I would be um but yeah I watched some videos and kind of got the poses down and I was practicing in front of the mirror trying to get my inner sexy on and then uh <laughs> I went for it so I, I think it went okay I think it went okay I think I did all right I mean that's good for you too because then you kind of know how it feels like to be the model when you are shooting clients and you know how exactly yeah. they're feeling absolutely so how did you actually develop your particular style? Mm, you think it's that particular? <laughs> yeah, it is. I, um, as I keep saying, it's a whole mood. Anyone who looks at your Instagram will be like, oh. <laughs> mm, I, um, I don't. That's a tough question. I guess. I feel like my emotions come out in the photograph. And so. Um, maybe this sounds super weird, but when I'm editing my photos, not usually taking the photo, but sometimes, but when I'm editing the photos, I believe it or not, I edit to music. I edit to a song in my mind. And so if there's a particular photo that reminds me of a song, I'll play the song. And as I'm listening to the song, I'll edit the photo to match the emotion. And you'll see that most of my photos are kind of dark or subdued. And I listen to a lot of depressing music. So I suppose that's why I don't know if you would call it depressing, but like, you know, some of my, like the people I'm listening to now are like, um, Billie Eilish and Vlana Del Rey and, um, Sia. And these are all female singers, but there's some that I've been listening to recently. So, so yeah, I kind of edit that way. And then as far as like the tones and the color palettes, um, you know, at some point I saw, uh, something about how they make movies and how they edit in teals and oranges because it's supposedly more pleasing to the eyes. And so I started playing with teals and oranges, like, uh, you know, 
maybe two years ago and I was like, oh, this looks pretty cool. And then I kind of just developed from there. But I am evolving just like any artist or musician or whatever. So I am changing my styles a little bit, you know, especially now that I'm doing more portrait photography. Not everybody wants to be teal and orange. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, That's true. (laughs) Um, I think they look cool. But I think that what... In my opinion, I'm not sure if that's the truth, but I feel like that is what makes people feel more connected to your photography because your page has, it looks like there's a lot of meaning to it and you can yeah. see that in the work. There's so many photography pages and I'm not saying their pages are not good, but they don't necessarily make you feel a certain way or you, just as you said, it kind of feels like you're listening to music. You know, when you're feeling sad and you hear like this certain song, when I look at some of your pictures, I'm like, wow. <laughs> and I'll, and I actually comment and tell you, I have to stare at this picture for a few minutes. I actually mean it. I look at it, I'm like, oh my God. And I'm going through a few set of emotions in my mind while I look at those photos. I think that would really made you stand out or successful. Yeah. it's awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. I definitely put a lot of meaning and, and, emotion into my photos and even if people don't understand it and a lot of people don't because inherently people are not going to connect with it or mm-hmm. they're just going to swipe past it but um yeah everything i post has a meaning to me and uh and it's it's really rewarding when people can connect with it so i appreciate that even your captions your captions um i think that's like one of the first posts that i that we started speaking from was something where you you had a picture and then you had a bunch of questions do you remember that uh-huh. No. I think it's a picture of yourself. Oh yeah. Oh, that was yeah. That was a yeah. That was a bad time. I remember. I remember that. Yeah, but it was like, but it was supposed to be thought provoking, right? So mm-hmm. I, apparently it was because yeah, I remember a lot of people reached out to me on that, and and a lot of people got into my DMs, and we had some really meaningful conversations. So it was really nice. Yeah. So Brian, amongst your work so far, all the pictures taken so far, which one of them is your favorite? And why? Gonna have to. Hmm. Um. That's tough. I would say. Well, I think the one that comes to mind is my my favorite. It was a street portrait, actually, and I took it in Montreal. Mm. About uh, three years ago, I think. I, when I just started photography, really, it was pretty new into photography, and I remember seeing uh, this old, older gentleman. He was homeless and he was um, sitting on the sidewalk and he was eating, it looked like he was eating McDonald's perhaps. And so I knelt down next to him and I said, hello. And his face like lit up. And I said, "Um, I think you're a really good looking guy. And if it's okay, could I pay you like $5 just to take your portrait? I figured he would help me out because I had never taken portraits before. And two, I'm sure the $5 would help him maybe buy his next meal. So when I handed him the money, he just got this beautiful smile, this, 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 like his eyes lit up and he's got this smirk on his face. I'll never forget it. Um, I mean, it was years ago and I still remember, I still remember it. And it's probably my, yeah, it has to be my favorite photo I've ever taken. And I, and I edited it in black and white. And reason being is, is, you know, he was, he was, you know, on the streets and he was dirty, but yet he, his like, his smile and his eyes just told me like he still had hope left and he was, you know, I don't know, you know, I still think about him and I, and I think like, if I can ever get back to Montreal, I wonder if I'll run into him because I owe him a lot. I've entered that photograph into multiple contests, but uh, no one has, no one has picked it yet as the winner, but it should be. It should be. Yeah. That's a nice story. I like that. Thanks. Um, so what is the most rewarding part of being a photographer for you? Most rewarding part, you know, okay. I'll give you an example. Um, it's not, it's not the thousands of likes that you get. It's not, um, you know, this, this shot is amazing, dude. You know, it's like the people that like will actually tell you that they connect with the photo. Kind of like you said earlier, like, like this reminds me of a time when, or you know what, you inspire me, or how can I shoot more like you? Like, just to know that like people are not only just a fan of the photography, but you know, want to do better and push themselves. But I think um, just 
quickly, like one of the coolest things that, that comes to my mind is I got an email um, from a uh, 12 year old girl, 11 or 12 year old girl from the Bahamas. I've never been there before. And she told me that she has to do a report on her most favorite person, or excuse me, most influential person in her life, something like that. Or someone she admires. That's what it was. I'm sorry. Someone that she admires. And she picked me. This little girl picked me. Aww. And she said, I want to do a report about you, but I need a picture of you. I need your like two of your favorite photos. And, and she asked me some of the same questions that you're asking me. And then, then, um, so she, I finally got to see her report. I was like touched. I think I, I think I cried, honestly. Like I was like, you know what? I can't, cause there was so many times I felt like quitting. Like, why am I doing this? I'm just, I spent so much time on this. And, um, it just, it was like so amazing to me. And just, uh, when I saw her report, I was just so touched. And then her parents reached out to me and said, like, you can't imagine what that did for our daughter. Like she thinks you're a celebrity and to, you know, to have you personally take your time to like reach out to her. And I'm like, oh man, like I'm done. End of show. You know what I mean? Like, uh, it was good. So things like that. And they, and they don't happen, you know, as often as I'd like, but when they happen, they're just so meaningful. So I know you post a lot of other things on YouTube. You have other content. Um, if you want to talk a bit about that and what you do. Yeah. YouTube is a little bit different than my Instagram, but, but similar in a way. So I do have some some vlogs I did, some videos of myself and some travels that I did. And uh, and I did some product reviews for things that were usually sent to me for free or things that I was interested in. And um, I do have a drone, so I, I enjoy flying that and taking aerial footage and videos and things like that. So um, what I've been doing a lot more lately is like um, tutorials on editing and how I edit, because it's probably my biggest question is like, how do you edit your photos? And so I have a few videos on there about that. And I'm kind of walking people through some techniques and how I do it. And, you know, like initially, um, you know, I, well, I'll tell you, some people have told me like, why do you want to share how you're doing it? Cause then people are going to copy you. And I'm like, everything I do is not a secret. Like other people do what I do. They don't do it exactly like me, but you know, the, the bones is the same. And so I would rather educate people and help people versus like hold that knowledge when everyone's going to find out two months from now anyways, how I did that. You know what I mean? Or, you know what I mean? And I've seen, and don't get me wrong, like imitation is really the biggest form of flattery. Um, you know, just like if you have, you're the little sister, right? I'm sure you've um, imitated your older sisters at some point and they was probably so annoyed with you, <laughs> but you were doing it because you love them and you want to be like them. Right. And so, you know, sometimes my followers will email me to like, Hey, this guy totally ripped off your photo. Look at this. He did like the same photo as you and then did the same thing. I'm like, awesome. Cause you know what that means? He loved what I did the first time so much so that he went back and tried to do exactly what I did. Then, Hey, I think that's a win for me. So. Oh, I like that. That's a good perspective. Yeah. Because Hey, I've copied people too. Not, not to the T, but you know, we find inspiration You know, I'm sure fashion designers are the same way. You know what I mean? I'm sure cricketers even, right? Like, you know, if they look up to somebody, how do they prepare for the matches? How do they work out? Um, what's their diet like? Do you know what I mean? And so, so you imitate that. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. That's true. Because you, you're looking up to them. They're getting inspired by them. And that's the whole purpose. Now it's time for the ultimate rapid fire. I don't like the sound of that, but okay. <laughs> so remember, you can answer with one word or a sentence. You can't go on. Just, okay. You can't take too long either. Okay. And am I allowed to pass? No. Creative answers are accepted. <laughs> okay. Okay. No pressure. No pressure. Okay. Something most people do not know about you. A random fact. Doesn't have to be a big deal. Um, um, I have a fear of losing my eyesight. Interesting. Your favorite lens, your favorite camera lens. Oh, Oh, my favorite camera lens. Okay, so my, my buddy let me borrow this. This is a uh, Rokinon 85 millimeter 1.4, which means it's beautiful portraits, beautiful portraits, as Kimmy knows, because hers were taken with this. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you could buy any type of food right now, what would you buy? Pizza. Pizza? I've been wanting pizza. 
From where? <laughs> I don't know. I no offense, Toronto, but you have crappy pizza. Someone help me. Someone that lives in Toronto, please help me because I don't know where to get good pizza. Um, are you a morning person or a night person? I like to shoot at night. I like to shoot when everyone else has gone to bed. Personally, I hate getting up early, but the reality is sometimes we have to. <laughs> so I feel like you're a night person. Mm. <laughs> a gadget you wish you never bought. I bought a stabilizer for my phone, a gimbal. It was $400. I used it four times. Makes no sense whatsoever for me to have that. I'm selling it, by the way, if anyone wants to buy it. <laughs> we need a picture of it here. Um, your favorite character from The Office? It's Dwight. Obviously, Dwight. It's just the, he's just a genius. I just wish I was him. And I wish I grew beets, but I don't have any room to grow beets. <laughs> your favorite color? Gray. Um, a song that has been on repeat lately. Oh boy. It's called Skechers. <laughs> and you knew I was going to say that. It's called Skechers. And I'll just leave it at that. Do not search it. <laughs> Please go search the Skechers song right now. You lost your composure. You didn't want me to. I, I, I'm just being honest. It's stuck in my head like every day. It'll go away eventually, but that's the song. Yep. Um, would you rather experience the beginning of planet Earth or the end? The beginning. I have a lot of unanswered questions about that. Okay. Would you rather read minds or accurately predict the future? Um, I would rather read minds. Yep. Wish I could expand on that. It's rapid fire. Go ahead. <laughs> Describe yourself in one word. Confused. Lost. Wow. Wow. No, you actually did so good. Yeah. It, it went by so fast, that means you did good. <laughs> oh, I did. Rapid fire worked out. See? Okay, that's, that wasn't so bad because I was nervous about that. Good. There you go. Um, good. Actually, before I have to say goodbye, I wanted to ask you what advice you would give aspiring photographers in this competitive world. Mm, I would say if you're going to get into photography, get into photography because you love it, because you enjoy it, and it's something that, that you want to do. Um, don't go chasing the money because it's difficult. It's a very saturated market. I don't know if 10 years from now, photographers will exist. The, you know, cell phones are improving and things like that. And so, you know, if, um, if you want to make a business out of it, then you need to know about business. If you want to be a great photographer, then you need to learn about um, taking great photos and find yourself a mentor if you can, and then study under them. And, and again, like we talked about mirroring your style, mirroring your style, if, if you will. Um, but if you want to get into photography as a business, just understand, you'll see there's very successful photographers that don't take good photographs, mm -hmm. but they're business people. So it depends on where you want to be. And I would also say, don't, don't give up. Don't be disappointed. It takes time. Um, some of us learn faster than others, but eventually you'll find your own and you'll, you'll find your, your niche, whether it's, or your niche depends on where you're from, mm -hmm. you know, whether or not you're, a, you know, a, a nature photographer or a street photographer and everybody likes different things. And so just don't give up and, and don't measure your success based on how many people like your photo because it has nothing to do with anything. It's, it should be for you. Thank you. I think that that was nice. <laughs> and also thank you so much for being on my show. It was a pleasure. It was an honor. You know, I'm a big fan of yours. And so I was, I was, I was really touched and excited uh, when you said you're going to have me as a, a guest, especially because I thought only cricketers would get on your show. And so <laughs> <That is> not true. <laughs> I feel like I've broken through. 
And um, yeah, thank you so much. And I wish you all the success in the world. And it was a, it was an honor. I'm not only being on the show, but also um, working with you too behind the camera as well. So thank, thank you. you. I look forward to working with you again and again. <laughs> awesome. Me too. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Bye. Brian. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Be sure to hit subscribe below and click on the little bell icon if you want to get a notification when I post a new video. Follow me on Instagram and share my video if you enjoyed it.